Housework and childcare are the wife's duties, right? Making the husband do that makes you unfit as a wife. The mother-in-law cannot accept making her son do housework and childcare under any circumstances. Who do you think is providing for your livelihood? Under the mother-in-law's fierce gaze, I couldn't say anything. Don't forget that you're able to live thanks to your husband. You're quite ungrateful. I was even made to do the laundry. I'm not a housekeeper. The husband beside me doesn't even try to defend me. If I divorce you, you won't be able to live with our daughter alone. Being strongly criticized by both my husband and mother-in-law, I had reached my limit. My name is Zoe, a 30-year-old office worker. I met my husband, Ash, in college, and our relationship progressed from there. After becoming working adults and being of suitable age, we got married. We soon had a daughter and gave birth. Because my job had irregular hours, I decided to change jobs after giving birth. Now I work full-time at a workplace with few overtime hours. At the time, I didn't realize it, but after marriage, I found out that my husband had a mama's boy tendency. Whenever my husband makes a decision, he always consults with his mother. When we were married and looking for a new home, I was surprised when he brought his mother along. This place has a spacious living room and convenient shopping, so why don't we decide on this room? Hmm, what do you think, mom? Even though I was consulting my husband, why was he asking for his mother's opinion? But the sunlight isn't very good here, so I think the other place is better. Yeah, you're right. I was thinking the same thing. Even though this would be the room for just my husband and me, his mother's opinion took precedence. In the end, after visiting several properties, we decided on one that satisfied his mother. I didn't complain because I also liked it, but I couldn't shake off my uneasiness. When we went to buy furniture and appliances, his mother also tagged along. Hey, don't you think your mother-in-law is busy too? How about going just the two of us next time? I wanted to decide with my husband alone, but he didn't listen even when I indirectly expressed that I didn't want his mother to come. It's not like mom is busy, so it's okay. Since she's helping, isn't it better to decide based on her opinion? Even if I hinted that I didn't want my mother-in-law to come, my husband didn't understand. Sometimes there would be messages saying dinner wasn't needed on weekdays, but it seemed like he was going home and having dinner with his mother. Because I was also working, it was convenient not to have to make dinner for my husband, so I didn't delve too deeply into it. My mother-in-law would be happy if her son came to visit occasionally, so I had no reason to complain. I didn't want to be thought of as a nagging wife and be disliked by my husband or mother-in-law. A few years into marriage, when our daughter started school, I received a call from my mother saying that my father wasn't feeling well. Since my elderly mother couldn't handle caregiving alone, I decided to go back home and help out in between work. During that time, I left my daughter in my husband's care. My daughter had become quite independent and even offered to help, knowing that I was having a hard time with caregiving, which was a great help to me. Then one day, my mother-in-law came to the house and started blaming me fiercely. What's your intention? Ash says he does all the childcare and housework. I'm sorry. My father's condition is bad, and caregiving is necessary right now. I believe that families should help each other when they're in trouble, but it seems my mother-in-law doesn't think so. Housework and childcare are the wife's duties, right? Making Ash do that makes you unfit as a wife. If you want to do caregiving so much, do the housework and childcare properly first. 
under my mother-in-law's stern gaze, I couldn't say anything. She just can't accept the fact that her son is doing housework and childcare. Who do you think is providing for your livelihood? Don't forget that it's thanks to Ash. You're quite ungrateful. While my mother-in-law fiercely blames me, my husband doesn't even try to defend me. Even though I also work, it's not like I'm living off my husband's salary alone, but according to my mother-in-law, it's all thanks to my husband. I was even made to do the laundry. I'm not a housekeeper. Although I asked him because I didn't have time, he didn't say anything and helped me. However, it seemed like dissatisfaction had been building up in my husband's heart. I even started to think that he was saying it on purpose, knowing that my mother-in-law's anger would escalate. After that, as I was busy with housework, childcare, and caregiving, my husband's criticism only got worse. I want to help with housework as much as possible, but when I really can't do it, I want you to help me. At least, I want you to do your own things by yourself. I pleaded. It was understandable that he couldn't take care of the children, but I asked him to at least clean up after himself. Why? Isn't the wife supposed to be here to take care of the house? Why should I have to do it? Is this how you avoid doing housework? My husband retorted. My husband completely failed to understand my desire for cooperation. Even though you earn less than me, you have the nerve to say such things. If we divorced, you wouldn't be able to live with our daughter. He continued. I had taken a lower paying job when I switched jobs once, and now I earned less than my husband. It was because I prioritized having less overtime since the children were small. While waving the filled out divorce papers, my husband began making more unreasonable demands. If you really want to take care of your father so much, make sure to clean the house every day before you go. I knew I couldn't do such a thing while working full time but he deliberately brought it up. Even when I was tired from overtime, I wasn't allowed to skimp on dinner. Aren't there too few dishes? You're just trying to cover it up with stir fries. And besides, I don't eat the ready-made dishes you buy at the supermarket. He criticized. Forced to present elaborate home-cooked meals, I was exhausted both mentally and physically. From then on, when I returned to my parents' house, I took my daughter with me. I no longer expected anything from my husband, who only demanded the impossible. I tried not to care about my husband and stopped taking much care of him. My mother doted on my daughter greatly, welcoming our visits home with joy. My daughter also loved my mother dearly, delighted to play with her. It's nice that you come. But aren't you pushing yourself too hard? I'm worried because you look tired. My mother noticed my changes immediately. Don't worry. I'm grateful that mom is taking care of the children, I said, feeling guilty for relying on my mother. In the midst of all this, my father, whom I had been caring for, passed away. While grieving, my mother and I discussed inheritance. As it turned out, my father was wealthy and owned several properties, including the family mansion. The family home was large enough to be called a mansion, albeit old, it was well-maintained and still inhabitable. It was originally where my parents lived together. When my husband came to propose, he was astonished to see the mansion. It was located in a popular area with good transportation access making it popular as a vacation home. It had plenty of nature and a good view, with deep sentimental value for my parents. I suppose mom will continue to live in this house, I naturally assumed, but my mother had a different opinion. Well, about that, I think this house is too big for me alone. My mother said. It must be difficult for my elderly mother to maintain the mansion. 
After much discussion, we decided that I would inherit the house, and my mother would move to a convenient condominium using her inheritance. After my father's funeral, my daughter and I stayed at the mansion to sort out his belongings and handle various inheritance procedures. While my mother and daughter went shopping, leaving me to work alone, my mother-in-law and husband suddenly barged in. What's going on? What's with this sudden visit? You inherited this mansion, didn't you? My mother-in-law said, looking around the mansion. If it's this spacious, we can all live together comfortably. What? I asked, not understanding what she meant. Starting today, we're living together. I'll educate you as a proper daughter-in-law, ha ha ha. My mother-in-law said with a smirk. Educate me as a daughter-in-law? I laughed at my mother-in-law's words. I stared at them both and said, Your daughter-in-law? Who are you talking about? I'm still single, you know. What? What are you talking about? My mother-in-law and husband were confused. I've already filed for divorce, so you two are strangers to me. It's unfortunate that there won't be a daughter-in-law for you to educate anymore. What? Do you think you can get away with this? When I mentioned the divorce, both of them widened their eyes in surprise. They probably never thought I would actually submit the divorce papers. It's not about being forgiven. Ash himself wrote the divorce papers. Speaking so impudently, you shouldn't defy your husband, you know. The mother-in-law exclaimed excitedly, shouting in protest. I had submitted the divorce papers that my husband had been using as a threat just before my father passed away. Even while I was caring for my father, my husband didn't cooperate at all. Rather, he only made things difficult for me. I had wanted to tell him about the divorce, but with my husband and mother-in-law not listening properly whenever we met, and then my father's passing, I missed the opportunity to tell him. My anger reached its peak at my mother-in-law's words. Because I'm a daughter-in-law, I'm supposed to obey everything you say? That's ridiculous. A daughter-in-law isn't a maid. I shouted. I didn't care if my mother-in-law hated me anymore. I wasn't a daughter-in-law anymore. What did you say? Don't get carried away. My mother-in-law got angry and tried to grab me. I tried to resist desperately, but my mother-in-law pinned me down with incredible strength. Stop it. Let go of me. You divorced on your own? How could you do such a thing without discussing it? You're such a terrible daughter-in-law, ignoring the son I've raised with care. My mother-in-law shouted with bloodshot eyes. While she shouted, the police arrived. Even as she spoke to the police officers, my mother-in-law's excitement didn't subside. When the police officers tried to calm her down, she resisted and ended up hitting one of them in the face. She was then taken away to the police station in a police car. As I watched my mother-in-law being taken away in the police car, my husband stood there dumbfounded. I'll claim compensation for the mental anguish I've suffered. I've documented everything. What are you talking about? My husband was confused and speechless. Without my supportive mother-in-law, my husband was helpless. Of course, I'll have custody of our child, so you'll have to pay child support every month. With no ally in sight, my husband could only stand there, crestfallen. Some time later, my ex-husband came to my workplace. Apparently, rumors had spread through mutual acquaintances from our university days that he often visited my workplace. His wife ran away from him. It seems like a daughter-in-law and mother-in-law trouble. 
I feel sorry for his wife. Feeling uncomfortable with the eyes of his colleagues on him, he resigned from his job. His hair was disheveled, his beard untrimmed, and he looked unkempt. I was surprised to see him like this. According to what I heard, he had become addicted to gambling due to stress and was financially struggling. Also, it seemed that my mother-in-law had been addicted to gambling for some time, so even with my ex-husband's new job, it was difficult for them to make a living. It's bothersome when you come to my workplace. But you don't even bother to reply when I contact you. I didn't want to have anything to do with my ex-husband or ex-mother-in-law anymore. Please, can you reduce the child support? I've been struggling financially lately. We agreed on the amount of child support, didn't we? You said you wanted to do everything you could as a father. He clicked his tongue and glared at me, displeased. The situation has changed, so it can't be helped. My new job pays less, and the bonuses are meager. From my perspective, I thought that if he didn't gamble, he could afford to pay alimony and child support. I was disappointed that he didn't have the awareness of being a father. With just your income, it must be tough, right? Hey, let's start over. I was genuinely astonished by my husband's proposal of remarriage due to financial difficulties. It infuriated me even though he spoke kindly. What? Who would ever remarry you? I won't have anything to do with a mama's boy. What did you say? My ex-husband, lacking awareness of being a mama's boy, vehemently reacted to my words. You, you can't decide anything without your mother, can you? The house, the furniture, the appliances, you consulted your mother about everything, right? It's not like it was everything. Even though my ex-husband countered, I had a mountain of things to say. Oh. I know about how you went shopping for clothes with your mother and let her decide. That's what society calls a mama's boy. Damn it. Stung by my words, my ex-husband looked frustrated. Although he thought of himself as a dutiful son, from my perspective, he was just a mama's boy who couldn't make any decisions on his own. You always used to make fun of my low salary but I won't let you say such things anymore. What do you mean? After I changed jobs and was praised for my hard work at my new workplace, I was able to get promoted. I got promoted. I earn more than you do now. What are you talking about? There's no way you earn more than me. My ex-husband refused to believe my words. He always boasted about his higher salary and belittled me. He probably never imagined that his wife would out-earn him. I don't need you to believe me. I can show you my pay stub any time. Confidently stating this, I silenced my husband. Moreover, with the inheritance I received, I could live comfortably even without him. Now. I'm not forced by my husband to do household chores, and there's no nagging mother-in-law, so life is very comfortable. Then, why don't you give me a share of the inherited mansion and other properties? I should have half the rights too. To my ex-husband's selfish request, I explained. Listen, inherited property doesn't become marital property. Sorry, but you have no rights. Damn it. It's all because you went and filed for divorce on your own. I haven't done anything wrong. He still seemed dissatisfied with the divorce. If you've done nothing wrong, then why did we divorce? Did you ever help me when I was busy raising a child? You didn't do anything, I pointed out. That's because you didn't do the housework properly. Even if I wanted to do the housework, I couldn't. Isn't marriage about helping each other when in trouble? 
realizing that he lacked the intention to support his wife. My affection for him faded. He wouldn't understand the feeling of not being helped when in dire straits. It's absurd for me alone to work and bear the burden of household chores and childcare. What did you say? It's the wife's job to do the housework and childcare. You're the one at fault for trying to push that onto your husband. He continued to shout, ignoring his own actions. Being a nuisance in front of my workplace, he was eventually taken away by security guards. Later, my ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law struggled financially and had to sell the family home. They barely managed to get by while paying alimony by moving to a rundown apartment. However, both of them couldn't quit gambling, and life seemed quite challenging for them. As for me, during busy and difficult times at work, I receive help from my mother while living happily with my daughter. My daughter seems delighted by the increased number of smiles on my face. Previously, my days were spent gauging the moods of my ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law. But from now on, I want to show my daughter how to live as herself. I have to raise my daughter alone. Through the experience with my ex-husband, I keenly realized the importance of parental education. I want to firmly instill in my daughter the values of compassion and helping others in need. No matter how tough it gets, I've decided to overcome it without forgetting to smile. How was this story? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Well then, see you in the next video.